Seems like the come up is real. Thoughts about living it up in the hills. Working this job cause it's paying my bills. Made a foundation I'm looking to build. Need all my wishes fulfilled. Turn all my dreams to reality. No one just chasing the fantasy. Coming for everything. Looking back down from a balcony. Thank God we stuck to the strategy. I kept it clear with the vision. They just been lacking ambition. Things change. People change. I had to deal with transition. See that these rappers go missing. Never aborted the mission. Gotta go get it. No stopping. Fail just wasn't an option. I wasn't made for a nine to five. I wasn't built for that type of life. I've been an underdog on the ride. She's in my dreams every single night. Got uncontrollable hunger pains. I got a monstrous appetite. Seems like I'll never be satisfied. I'm always been in another fight. I've been the man for the job. You got the night at the interview. They didn't think I was capable. Knew I was born for this right when they cut the umbilical. All of these rappers the same. Swear to identical. Fuck what they play on the radio. I used to sit all alone in the studio. Pray for a miracle. Now everything still looking beautiful. Hell and back, I've been through it. Took all the chances they would it. They loving the way that I do it. Always been real for improvement. Please don't you give me a reason. I get it all when they sleeping. Work every day plus the weekend. Told them it's somebody sees it. Hell and back, I've been through it. Took all the chances they would it. They loving the way that I do it. Always been real for improvement. Please don't you give me a reason. I get it all when they sleeping. Work every day plus the weekend. Told them it's somebody sees it. Said that I kill it and nobody telling me different. I leave them dead in the casket. Ones that are close to me say that I'm distant. Knew I was gifting, but they wasn't present. Ayy, come for your neck like I'm Dracula. Know that I'm far from the regular. Finna be something spectacular. Step up the level, the formula. Up every night, know it's something yet. Get on the beat, then I body that. They listening now like a wiretap. I need to know where that money at. I go to work on it daily. Most of these rappers be lazy. Love when they look at me crazy. Tell them my name again, feel like their memory hazy. Fashion. I got my eyes on a mansion People keep talking and talking and talking But never gonna put in that action Went through the struggle, I'm moving up levels Not too many people that sit in my circle I lost a few battles but learned a rebuttal I had to go prove I was special I be the one that's gonna get it done Got an opinion, don't give me one I gotta make it out where I'm from Starting that beef, I am not the one Everyone's searching for clout That's what the game's been about I'm on a whole nother route They wanna know how I do it But they cannot figure me out Hell and back, I've been through it. Took all the chances they would it. They loving the way that I do it. Always been real for improvement. Please don't you give me a reason. I get it all when they sleeping. Work every day plus the weekend. Told them it's somebody sees it. Hell and back, I've been through it. Took all the chances they would it. They loving the way that I do it. Always been real for improvement. Please don't you give me a reason. I get it all when they sleeping. Work every day plus the weekend. Told them it's somebody sees it. What is up, YouTube? So I haven't made a video in forever. Like, I can't even remember. The last video I made was the hustling video, so I think it's about time I made another video. So, um, look, y'all, my computer is kind of a clunker, so um, if the video is a bit laggy or whatever, my apologies if the computer is a little bit slow. I tried to load everything up already so that it will be as smooth as possible, but yeah. My computer is a potato, so we're going to do the best we can here. But I thought we'd crack a fresh one and get into it. Cheers. Oh, and this is a uh, fresh, cool Dr. Pepper Zero Sugar, for those of you who are wondering. Delicious. Now, what I wanted to talk about today is a contentious topic which has recently become um, the hot topic um, in the past few weeks or so among the vegan community and that is about the definition of veganism right so by and large if you will go throughout the vegan community and speak with other vegans and ask them what the definition of veganism is you will get the majority of them pointing you to this the definition provided by the vegan society which is right here now I don't agree with this definition um, <clears throat> I think well first of all let me just point out that like it doesn't capture 
what I understand veganism to be when I think about veganism, and so that's why I don't like it. But there's definitely other problems I have with it. And so I'm just going to go over my problems with the definition. We'll go ahead and get into the definition that I prefer. And then we're going to watch a couple videos, um, which I had not seen yet. I'm going to be reacting to them. Uh, the first one is going to be Lifting Vegan Logic. We need to change the definition of veganism immediately. He just posted this on September the 8th, 2022. It's the 10th right now. So fresh hot topic. And then also we've got um, a Twitter space conversation um, with uh, Nick. And I don't know how to pronounce his last name. I think it's Hebert, Hebert, something like that. I probably totally butchered it. I'm sorry, Nick. Um, but you should definitely follow his content. He's an amazing creator. Anyways, this was posted September 10th. Uh, links to his content will be below as well as Lifting Vegan Logic. So be sure to check it out. Um, both of them are amazing content creators, very based. I uh, highly recommend following them. I'm sure these are going to be, uh, what I hear is going to be excellent. Um, but I haven't heard what they have to say yet. I'm going to be reacting to it. And before they, I do that, like I said, I'm just going to, we're going to go ahead and go over my position and what the problems I see, right? So, like I said, first off, it doesn't capture what I understand veganism to be when I'm thinking of veganism. And second off, let's look at some of the problems. The definition as it is written here is veganism is a philosophy and way of living which seeks to exclude as far as is possible and practicable all forms of exploitation of and cruelty to animals for food, clothing, or any other purpose, and by extension promotes the development and use of animal-free alternatives for the benefit of animals, humans, and the environment. In dietary terms, it denotes the practice of dispensing with all products derived wholly or partly from animals. All right. So let's look at some of the problems, right? Like, I think I see three major problems here, besides the fact that it just doesn't capture what I understand veganism to be. And uh, let's get into the first one. Uh, veganism is a philosophy and way of living which seeks to exclude as far as is possible and practicable. Uh, yeah. I, first of all, saying possible and practicable, it's not that it's incoherent, but most people take practical to mean practical, like as in like what is practically or, uh, you know, feasibly, like reasonably, reasonably feasible, I guess, would be a good way to uh, synonymize practical. But this is not the word that they chose. They chose practicable. And I don't think people understand the definition of this word. Or maybe they've never bothered to look it up. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Uh, just to be clear. Okay, I like to be clear about things. And again, sorry, I forgot to load this up. My computer's a little bit of a clunker, so just bear with me. Essentially what my problem is... Come on. Let's go, let's go, let's go. I'm so impatient. Yeah, I know this page is slowing me down. See, <clears throat> this is uh, this is what I was warning about. Okay, here we go. Practicable. Woof! And there it is. I typed it out, and it took like what, five, seven seconds to like actually get there. <laughs> ah, it's okay. I'm not complaining. It's just, it is what it is. <laughs> While that loads, let me just look it up on my phone because I'll be able to pull it up way faster. Right, so, practicable. Alright, according to dictionary.com, which is actually, um, to be clear, um, dictionary.com is... The Random House Unabridged Dictionary, supplemented with the American Heritage and Collins English Dictionaries. So, since we're all clear. Now that that's loaded up, <clears throat> practicable. Uh, and that means capable of being done, affected, or put into practice with available means, feasible. Right? Capable of being used. Now, feasible, I know I used that word earlier, but I said reasonably feasible. I qualified it with that, right? Because practical... Let's look up the definition of practical. I'm just going to do it on my phone here for the sake of time. Practical. Using the exact same dictionary. I happen to love this dictionary. That's very nice. 
<clears throat> practical. Uh, adjective. Of or relating to practice or action. Uh, yes, not the word I was looking for. Consisting of, involving, or resulting from practice or action. Yes. Uh, of relating to or concerned with ordinary activities, business, or work. Right. Right. Adapted or designed for actual use. Useful. Right. Engaged in or experience with practice or work. Inclined to or fitted for actual work or useful activities. Mindful of the results, usefulness, advantages or disadvantages, etc. of the action or procedure in question. Right? So, practical is not the same as practicable. Practicable is capable of being done, affected, or put into practice with available means. Feasible. I mean, it's, it's exactly the same. It's completely synonymous with the word possible. So when they say possible and practicable, it's not clear what they're trying to communicate because possible and practicable are completely synonymous. It, they mean essentially the exact same thing because whatever is capable of being put into practice is also what is possible, right? So if we're going to just assume that they actually meant to use that word, then that means that what they are saying is it's a way of life which seeks to exclude as far as is possible and practicable all forms of exploitation of and cruelty to animals for food, clothing, or any other purpose. Now the problem with that is that's going to entail all sorts of silly things, right? Like, for example, if you are going to exclude as far as is possible and is practicable, which means possible, right? Capable of being put into practice, all forms of exploitation of and cruelty to animals right that would that would include for example maybe starving yourself so that you wouldn't entail any crop deaths because crop deaths could be considered cruel to animals right it's uh it's killing an animal uh that is an innocent being that essentially was doing uh, uh was not initiating the uh, wasn't breaking the um what's the word uh essentially that they they weren't uh they weren't aggressing Right, so, <clears throat> so that already has some problems, and then you know that would also entail like for example not mowing your lawn. Like maybe it it could even entail like not leaving your house so that you wouldn't step on any animals and cruelly kill them. Right, uh, or maybe you'd run over an animal with your car by accident. Right, so maybe you shouldn't drive either. Like it's going to entail all sorts of silly things if we talk about what's possible. Like that's why what's practicable is or what's practical like what is actually reasonably feasible uh, you know that would be what people normally take it to mean that's not what it actually means so um, so that's the first problem second problem let's see yeah if you notice here it says uh, b uh, by extension uh, yeah, blah blah blah. So it's it's uh, rejecting exploitation and cruelty to animals, but um, promotes the development and use of animal-free alternatives for the benefit of animals, humans, and the environment. Well, yeah. See, the fact that like a there's a benefit to humans and b that there's a benefit to the environment is completely tangential to veganism, as I understand veganism. Veganism is a moral position about the rights of sentient beings, right? Whereas like the environment and you know maybe any benefits that humans might get out of any relationships that we have like that's completely tangential and that's not the f like what veganism is about i mean that's that's essentially like i said it's it's not capturing what i understand veganism to be and let's see i believe i said there was three problems let me see if i can figure out what that third one was i probably should have taken notes before i made this video i'm kind of winging this for you guys but I think this deserves to be talked about. Yeah, I can't remember what the third problem was, so we're going to leave it at that. But an interesting tidbit, if you scroll down a little further on the vegan society definition, uh, you're going to find <clears throat> that uh, originally the suggested definition was the principle of the emancipation of animals from the exploitation by man. Now that that I can is a lot more agreeable, although it's not really um, precise as I would like it to be. Uh, it looks like it's been later clarified as to seek an end to the use of animals by man for food, commodities, work, hunting, vivisection, 
and by all other uses involving exploitation of animal life by man. So, yeah, I mean, this is definitely way better than the definition that the vegan society offered. It's not going to entail as many silly things. Uh, it, it doesn't, rec you know, it doesn't entail for example, like, starving yourself so that, like, you're not going to cause any crop deaths or anything like that, right? Like, you can actually work this into, the, like, something like that. But, yeah, for that reason, I don't like to use the vegan society definition. Um, <clears throat> I, th I think it's it's rather silly. If, if you were charitably interpreting this as, like, meant to be practical, you know, I think it's 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 better, but it's it's still less than ideal. And so... The definition that I prefer is actually only slightly ironically derived. Um, it, it's derived from a definition which was provided by somebody named Shadow Starshine. Now, the the reason it's slightly ironic for those of you that don't know is Shadow Starshine uh, is a vegan debater who considers himself anti-vegan, uh, if I'm not mistaken. And so you would think that like, oh, an anti-vegan might have like a kind of a wacky definition of uh, veganism, right? But for whatever reason, I have found that definition, with some tweaking of my own, to be as accurate or the most accurate definition that captures what I understand veganism to be thus far. And so reading it as follows, it is veganism is an ethical, and this is my rehash of it, this is not the original Shadow Star Shine definition, if that wasn't clear, I just wanted to make sure. It says, veganism is an ethical philosophy, justice movement, and way of living which seeks to extend fundamental rights to sentient individuals, thereby placing a higher value on animal life, liberty, and well-being than is placed on substitutable classes of goods, services, products, or uses which may be derived from animals. That is to say, that if one is reasonably or practically able to live in such a way so as to divest from systems or actions which engender the commodification exploitation, oppression, victimization, harm, and or killing of other sentient beings, then to do so would be in accordance with the principles of veganism. And I know that's kind of a lot to unpack, but that, so far, captures as best as I can tell what I understand veganism to be. And if anyone thinks that there's a problem with my definition, or they think there's a way to improve upon it, like, by all means, please hit me up. Um, I'm always open to discussing this. I'm always open to, you know, uh, to being critiqued to a better position. I would uh, really prefer it if anybody has any good critiques or, or just any suggestions or anything like that. Another definition of veganism that I do tend to agree with um, is the intraspecies definition, which is uh, sh uh, also known as Sherlock Holmes um, on Twitter. I think uh, the account is CurryCruncher5000. Um, I'll put a link to her YouTube below. She hasn't been, she took all her videos off YouTube for some reason. I'm not quite sure why. I'm hoping she gets back into creating, so I'm not sure what the deal is with her right now. But if you go to her Discord, you'll find this, which is her definition of veganism, and it is as follows. Quote, my definition of veganism. Veganism is a means of respecting the moral rights of non-humans, rights which are an extension of human rights within the morally relevant contexts. Respecting rights in this sense means not violating them, and morally relevant context refers to when morally relevant traits have been equalized. For instance, if I generally afford the right to vote to humans, I would not extend that same right to non-humans, because the morally relevant traits one must possess in order to be endowed with the right would be things such as the ability to understand and perform the action. Non-human animals cannot, therefore I do not extend the right to them. Humans generally possess those traits, so I generally extend that right to them. However, if there were a human without those traits, or an animal with them, I would restrict the right in the case of the former and grant it in the case of the latter. Further clarification on my position and moral system. I am a threshold deontologist, which means I approach morality from a rights and rules based perspective. I believe there to be a set of rights that we should respect and that these rights can be violated if the disutility or suffering caused by not violating them is significant enough. Note, th it's not just whether there exists some amount of disutility or suffering for not violating them, but rather where, whether there is enough of it, or, in other words, whether it surpasses the necessary threshold, hence threshold deontology. And there is a link to her Discord, which I will provide as well. <coughs> And it continues. What about the other definitions of veganism? 
There certainly exist different definitions of veganism, and which definition you will use will depend primarily on things such as your normative theory. However, they generally tend to allude to the same idea, which is that holocausting animals is bad, and we should probably avoid doing it. <laughs> it's worth noting, though, that the slight differences in these definitions can have a pretty big impact on the entailments that you're forced to accept. We already went over how that's the case with the vegan society definition. <clears throat> the definition I use is one that I've explored quite thoroughly and I'm comfortable defending in a debate, though, as time goes on, I may make slight adjustments as I become aware of new criticisms. And that's the end of her definition. And I, that is a very precise definition. I completely agree with it. I like it. Um, yeah. I just prefer my definition. I don't know why. It seems to capture what I understand veganism to be just a little bit more. Um, but, yeah, those are that's another great definition of veganism. And if you go and ask other vegans, you're going to find that, like, a lot of the times people do have proprietary definitions. Like, there's people have varying definitions of veganism uh, depending on who you're speaking with. But they all generally do uh, revolve around animal rights. Now, if you go to the dictionary, we're not going to look it up because, you know, you know how my computer is. But uh, a lot of the times, veganism is defined as, like, uh, avoiding animal products, in, especially in diet and lifestyle, right? But um, I don't think that that is... I think that's a colloquially uh, common definition of veganism that doesn't capture what um, what I understand veganism to be, which, as I mentioned, is a so is a justice movement and a way of living and a philosophy which seeks to uh, which seeks to extend fundamental rights to sentient beings right so that being said that's my position um, <clears throat> and those are the most common definitions that you're going to find about veganism now that being said uh, Lifting Vegan Logic just made this video. It says we need to change the definition of veganism immediately. I'm sure it's going to be really interesting. I haven't seen it yet. And so, yeah, let's get into it. Sorry if my computer is a little uh, slow and glitchy. All in the vegan philosophy. Oh. Sorry. Hey. Started a little bit late. I did a little audio test earlier just to make sure everything was working okay. Ah. Now here is my alternative definition to the currently held definition of veganism by the Vegan Society that I personally think captures much more of what animal rights activists have in mind when calling themselves vegan and, you know, doing vegan things and following the vegan philosophy. Well, cool. I'm actually really looking forward to that. Um, I didn't know that Lifting Vegan Logic had his own definition that he was going to propose. Um, that's freaking cool. Uh, Lifting Vegan Logic is super based. He's uh, he's knowledgeable. He's uh, very concerned with like consistency and uh, being logically sound. So uh, he's a great person to follow. Very good faith. Um, yeah, I'm really excited to see what his uh, what his recommendation is. And I'm curious what problems he's going to raise. Hey, what is going on, guys? So today we're going to be discussing the commonly cited vegan definition from the Vegan Society by many vegans and why I think there are many problems that come with using and operating under the definition and why we should basically use something else. I will also be covering a past construction of the definition from the Vice President of the Vegan Society in 1951 that I actually believe was much more fit for the goal of animal rights than the currently established vegan definition from the... Okay, yeah, it looks like we're so far on about the, the same vegan page. Society. Toward the end of the video, I will also be giving my alternative definition that I think we should be operating from that doesn't run into all of the same problems that the current definition does. I've already strongly covered my problems with the definition in one of my more recent videos covering Cosmic Skeptic and Michaela Peterson, but I... Hunting is vegan, right. That's another one that uh, uh, is, uh, is a curious one to think about. So if the vegan society, that's another silly thing that might be entailed by the vegan society definition, right? For, so for example, like hunting doesn't entail any crop deaths. As a matter of fact, if anything, there might be some insect deaths that you are um, saving the life of by killing an animal because it would have trampled on those insects otherwise, right? So um, in that sense, you're like saving the life of some insects. You're not causing any insect deaths. 
uh, and you're not causing any uh, like reptile or bird or other mammalian uh, or mammalian sorry not other mammalian but mammalian um, deaths right from little rodents and whatnot and so if 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 excluding as far as is possible you know and someone was to think that like for example starving themselves wasn't possible I don't know why that would be impossible seems very possible <laughs> Um, then yeah, hunting could be a vegan because it would be, um, for some people, the, the way of reducing their cruelty to animals as far as is possible, right? But if you're talking about a definition of veganism that revolves around animal rights, then you couldn't say that, right? So that, that's another huge problem with the vegan society definition. Yeah, I can't believe I, f I missed that one. <laughs> I'm sure he's going to go into that in more depth. I still wanted to make a video fully dedicated to my issues, partially because it may be in the works for me and a couple of big other activists to reach out to the vegan society in the form of a write-up to try to contact them and, you know, have them reword the definition and operate under something else. And it's that would be based. I have always wanted to talk to the vegan society about their definition, see if they actually meant to use the word practicable and see if they would be willing to change it to practical and honestly to maybe just rework the entire definition in t uh, as, as a whole because I think we can do better and I think we should do better. This video should be a great assistance in developing that write up. So guys, this is all the more reason for you to fully engage with this video in the hopes that we can you know, get more vegans on board with it and maybe get the vegan society's attention and get them to possibly change the definition or just change the wording but yeah if you've seen the cosmic skeptic video there will be some points here that will be repeated from that video but there will also be new things so please stick around especially because you know the algorithm and you know the more you watch of this video the more likely this video will be suggested to others and the more people will obviously see it and we'll have more backing for this potential change in the definition for veganism and let it be Speaking of which, if you haven't subscribed to Lifting Vegan Logic, like, definitely do that. I know I mentioned this already, but, like, seriously, based content creator. You made it clear that I am not just one of a few activists who hold these opinions toward the vegan society's definition of veganism. Many vegan activists do, and I've seen these problems raised many times over the last couple years, so I wanted to make a singular video just going over the issues with the definition. So, here we are. Let's start with the definition my problems with the definition, my alternative definition, and then past definitions that have been uttered by members of the vegan society back in the 1900s that I actually pretty much agree with. So the current definition of veganism reads, veganism is a philosophy and way of living which seeks to exclude as far as is possible and practicable all forms of exploitation of and cruelty to animals for food, clothing, or any other purpose, and by extension, promotes the development and use of animal-free alternatives for the benefit of animals, humans, and the environment. In dietary terms, it denotes the practice of dispensing with all products derived wholly or partly from animals. So here's the main part of the definition that I take issue with, which seeks to exclude, as far as is possible and practicable, all forms of exploitation of and cruelty to animals. This seems like a very utilitarian-based kind of definition, as opposed to a rights-based definition. According to this definition, the more vegan thing to do between two decisions will always be the one which excludes animal suffering and death as far as is possible and practicable. In other words, the decision which reduces animal suffering and death the most. There is no consideration for the nature of the killing in question and whether a specific type of killing counts or qualifies as a rights violation between the two decisions. You'll see by the end of this video that I simply wish to extend the positions we already hold for humans to animals in regard to preventing rights violations over preventing the most suffering. Solely caring about suffering reduction is a problem because there are many clear cases in which a person who is interested in preserving human or animal rights would not choose the option which reduced animal or human suffering the most. Take for example hunting a deer because doing so entailed less death than say incidental deaths in crop production. Yep. Is hunting deer for food now considered more vegan than buying vegan foods in this scenario? That is what the current vegan society's definition would have to entail given that hunting the deer is a decision which most reduces suffering. My issue here is that in the human scenario... Of course, that's assuming that the person thought it wasn't possible to starve themselves, which again, is totally possible and is, is just silly. It's absolutely silly. Like, that's not what veganism is about. <laughs>
you know, assuming that that was what was possible, right? In we don't order consider to incidental human deaths no in industry to be rights violations. If we knew a certain amount of humans died in crop field accidents, which, by the way, they do, and simultaneously knew that we could just hunt a random human for food, which would in turn cause less human death than buying crop foods, would we consider it ethical to just go ahead and murder random people for food instead? Another scenario with humans where doing the thing that reduces suffering... <laughs> That's actually a pretty hilarious reductio. I didn't even think of that one. <laughs> See, this is why you gotta follow this guy. He's good. Most isn't what we tend to think we should do is killing one person in order to extract their organs and save five people on the way to organ failure. Yes, the decision reduces suffering most, but we consider the murder of the innocent person whose organs are extracted to be a rights violation. If five cows are on the way to organ failure, and we go ahead and kill a healthy cow and save the other five cows, would we consider doing this to be vegan? The currently held vegan definition by the vegan society would. Imagine in the human case that there was a condition that five people were suffering from, and we could forcibly conduct a trial on a singular healthy person, which would result in their death, that would give us the cure for the other five people's condition. Would we consider the forcible testing to be an unjustifiable human rights violation? Absolutely. Of course. But under the vegan society's definition for veganism, if this were to be a situation with cows, it would be vegan to conduct the testing. The current vegan society definition also allows for killing animals out of need, which we do not necessarily accept as moral in the case of humans. This can be seen in the part stating, veganism is a philosophy and way of living which seeks to exclude as far as is possible and practicable all forms of exploitation of and cruelty to animals for food, clothing, or any other purpose. The phrase, as far as is possible and practicable, is very nebulous and ambiguous, and we'll cover other problems that extend from this phrase later, but for now, let's acknowledge how this part of the definition allows for killing out of need. When you say as far as is possible and practicable, you are allowing for the killing of animals out of need because not doing so is impracticable when you need to. And we simply... Um, yeah, I disagree. I mean, impracticable means not capable of putting into practice as we, as we just checked from the definition, right? <laughs> capable of being done, affected, or put into practice, right? So if it's capable, if you're capable of not killing an animal and, you know, even if that entails your death, that would still be possible. That would still be in the realm of things that could be done and therefore it would be practicable. So, yeah, I actually disagree with that. <laughs> Come on, computer. You don't necessarily hold these kinds of positions for human rights. And in all honesty, guys, just as a quick side note, the framing of this part seems rather anthropocentric seeing as it allows humans to just kill animals if it isn't practicable for them to not in order to survive. For example, if a human is in need of a pig valve to live, under this definition, it is technically vegan for them to go ahead and murder a pig for their valve because they are acting in line with what is most practicable to them. In the case of human rights, do we consider it pro-human rights or the most pro-human rights thing to do to go ahead and murder a human for their valve when you need one? Of course not. And just another side note, if a vegan is going to say that it is vegan and ethical to kill a pig for their valve out of need, I would be curious to know if you hold the same position for killing humans for their valves when you need one. If not, what is the morally relevant difference between humans and a pig such that it is ethical to kill a pig for a valve when you need one, but not a human? Is the difference intelligence? Would that mean that it's ethical to kill mentally handicapped humans who show no greater degree of intelligence than a pig for their valve? Out of need? I certainly hope not. So here is <laughs> the issue with the vegan society's definition. It doesn't seem to run as a logical extension of human rights to animal rights. The fact is that we just don't always consider it pro-human rights or the most pro-human rights thing to do to make a decision that reduces human suffering the most or another decision which is where you, you know, kill a human but out of need. Take the organ failure example, the testing on a human to save five humans example, the hunting humans over buying crops example, or even the killing a human for their valve that you need example. We simply don't consider these accounts of human murder and testing to be pro-human rights or the most human rights thing for you to do in those situations because those accounts of murder and testing qualify clearly as rights violations. But the currently held vegan definition by the vegan society allows for these things toward animals and does not take into account whether actions are rights violations or not. It seems to primarily... Yeah, but again, that would that would have to be under the assumption that it was somehow not possible to just not eat if that was what caused the least animal suffering, right? Or the least animal cruelty. So if you could kill no insects by not eating, if you could kill no crop deaths, you could kill no animals by hunting by not eating, then yeah, that, that it would be entailed. <laughs> Uh, 
entirely values suffering reduction and even justifies killing animals out of need for humans, which is rather anthropocentric and anti-animal rights. This all clearly demonstrates that the currently held definition for veganism held by the vegan society does not entail a logical extension of human rights to animal rights. Let's now touch on how nebulous and ambiguous the words are in the definition possible and practicable. What exactly do these words mean in the definition? Does this mean that because it is technically possible and practicable to not exceed daily needed calories per day to survive, that consuming an excess of calories derived from plants is not considered vegan because doing so is not excluding animal suffering and death? You're almost there. You're almost there, dude. Like, you know, b besides reducing calories, you could just reduce all of your calories, right? Like, there's no reason someone couldn't possibly do that. Like, it, it doesn't say possible within the realm of survivability or anything to that nature. Like, it, it doesn't make that qualification. <laughs> Specifically from crop deaths, as much as is possible and practicable. Are vegan bodybuilders eating in a calorie surplus who are hence causing more crop deaths than they otherwise would have caused had they just consumed their base needed amount of calories? not vegan because they are not excluding animal suffering and death as far as is possible and practicable. What about vegans who attend a vegan potluck and consume an overabundance of calories one night? Are all of these vegans not vegan because they could have practiced otherwise? But then one may say that it isn't practicable to pay this close attention to your calories this much and therefore it is still vegan to overconsume calories. Uh, yeah, I don't see how that's the case. How could it not be p practicable? I mean, that just means capable of being put into practice. I mean, I think it's very clear that it's that's something that is capable of being put into practice. I mean, you would have to be profoundly, like, intellectually challenged for this to not be the case. <laughs> But what does that mean? I know for me, I could totally tend to the standard, so maybe it's more or less practicable for certain humans. Are people who practically can watch their calories this closely not vegan for overconsuming calories, but the people who are too preoccupied to practically track their calories this much still vegan even though they're overconsuming calories? What if somebody claims they're addicted to a certain animal food and they claim it is not practicable for them to stop eating steak? Is there a cons By the way, short point. Uh, lifting vegan logic he is a uh, uh, fitness coach so if anyone needs a fitness coach definitely hit him up uh, he's got super base knowledge he'll be able to give you advice on hypertrophy and uh, you know your training your diet all that jazz uh, I highly recommend uh, hitting him up if you're interested I am actually definitely going to be um, by purchasing his services eventually once I get my finances straight uh, yeah super awesome so anyone who's looking for a fitness trainer or you want to get fit like hit him up assumption of steak now vegan what if somebody just finishes a giant vegan meal and has no access to vegan food for 12 hours but gets very hungry at 10 hours of waiting are they doing the vegan thing and going to a steakhouse because in their view, it wasn't practicable for them to wait another two hours. So in summary... Again, practicable means capable of being put into practice. I don't see how that could be the case. They'd have to demonstrate that, right? Like, if they want to say it's not... Uh, it's They're not capable of, you know, for example, not eating anything, or they're not capable of waiting, you know, uh, that's, that's quite an interesting position. <laughs> I'd love to hear the argument for that. <laughs> There are three basic problems with the currently held vegan definition by the vegan society. Here they are. Number one, it seems to be a suffering reduction based definition as opposed to a rights based definition. Number two, it doesn't seem to entail a logical extension of human rights to animal rights. And number three, the phrase possible and impracticable is extremely ambiguous and vague and leads to weird scenarios where people aren't technically vegan for overconsuming calories and killing out of need is considered vegan. I wonder if he's going to share the um, intraspecies definition. I'm, I'm pr I think he's probably aware of it. So that would be interesting to see. Vegan. Hey, what's up, guys? So just a quick interruption. What you're seeing right now was actually filmed after this video was already fully done and I'm showing it now. Sorry guys.
I don't have YouTube Premium, so we got ads. <laughs> I give you my word, and my word is tough. My mission, attack my active support, chaotic arthritis, with Rinfo. I'm tough on relieving my joint pain. Tough when it comes to my skin. Rinfo is a once daily pill that tackles joint pain, stiffness, and swelling. It can stop the reversible joint damage. And leads to get clear or almost Oh, clear. come on. Where's the skip button? Yeah, the there we go. <laughs> Uh, lower your my computer is such a clunker. Actual potato. Yes, I'm aware, YouTube Premium, that you offer a free trial. Thank you. <laughs> Seeing right now was actually filmed after this video was already fully done and I'm showing it now because there is some other points I thought of that I hadn't thought of while making this video that I felt I should include which suggests we should change the definition of veganism according to the vegan society and just you know in general so I don't know where I'm gonna put this video in the original video but it'll be somewhere and I'll try to make it as not awkward as possible yeah so, it's totally awkward. so what I thought of <laughs> is how the definition of veganism according to the vegan society only pertains to the word animal when talking about who we should be protecting as oh yeah to non-human sentient beings oh I yeah this problematic because that was that was the third problem you're right that was the third problem that I forgot is is it's talking about animals which doesn't really capture like what we care about when it comes to extending rights right like it's not the uh, um, it's not the actual fact that there's an animal that makes them worthy of rights. It's them being sentient, like or rather the properties which arise from sentience, which is, that we care about, right? This puts us in a scenario where it would technically be considered vegan to torture a hypothetical sentient non-human animal being, such as a plant. According to the definition, it would be more vegan to torture and kill a sentient plant over a non-sentient animal, such as a sponge. Now I know this is just a little weird hypothetical, but please hear me out. I'm just pointing out that our intuitions as vegans clearly point toward protecting the rights of non-human sentient beings, not animals. We don't try to avoid violating the rights of and cause suffering to animals because they are animals, but because they can suffer and are sentient. But all this precisely, and and by that same extension, if we had, for example, an AI that was able to achieve sentience, then we would also be morally obligated to extend them rights for the same exact reasons that we would uh, extend fundamental rights to any sentient being. There's no, there's nothing about the animalness in question that makes the um, that gives the the object in question. Uh, the property of being a moral patient. It's, again, it's the sentience. And sentient AI is something we may very well have to deal with um, in the future. In mind, I think it's pretty clear that veganism intended to protect the rights of non-human sentient beings, not just animals per se. And therefore, there's clearly a problem with this aspect of the definition only using the word animal. And you'll see how this is addressed in my reformulation of the vegan definition and what I think we should operate from from here on out. Yeah, I'm, I'm very curious now, about this. Now, here's my alternative definition to the currently held definition of veganism by the vegan society that I personally think captures much more of what animal rights activists have in mind when calling themselves vegan and, you know, doing vegan things and following the vegan philosophy. A moral philosophy which seeks to extend basic human rights to non-human sentient beings. Now, maybe there can be a detail. Okay, that's that's like the, essentially the same as my definition. It's just not as detailed, right? Like, my definition, veganism is an ethical philosophy, justice movement, and way of living which seeks to extend fundamental rights, is what I describe them as to sentient individuals, thereby placing a higher value on animal life, liberty, and well-being than is placed on substitutable classes of goods, services, products, or uses which may be derived from animals. But again, animals is a proxy for what we care about. It's, it's, not, uh, it's, it's a sufficiency criterion, it's not a necessary criterion. But yeah, yes, based. I mean, I, I completely agree with his definition.
tail covering how by basic rights we don't mean the right to vote or drive, although we earthly don't give these rights to certain mentally handicapped humans, so you would think this is obvious and maybe doesn't need to be stated. Oh, it Who does. Really knows? And before we end this video, I do want to cover a past writing from Leslie Cross, who was the past vice president for the Vegan Society back in 1951. This writing does suggest to me that the alternative definition I'm offering is much more in line with the goals of the original creators of the Vegan Society than the current goals suggested by the current vegan definition that the Vegan Society holds. He wrote this in a publication in Vegan News. Recently, the Vegan Society adopted revised and extended rules which, among other things, clarify the goals toward which the movement aspires. The Society's object and meaning of the word veganism, which have until now been matters of inference and personal predilection, are now defined as follows. The object of the Society shall be to end the exploitation of animals by man, and the word veganism shall mean the doctrine that man should live without exploiting animals. The Society pledges itself to seek to end the use of animals by man for food, commodities, work, hunting, vivisection, and all other uses involving exploitation of animal life by man. The effect of this development is to make veganism unique among movements concerned with animal welfare, for it is crystallized as a whole and not, as are all other such movements, as an abstraction. Where every other movement deals with a segment and therefore deals directly with practices rather than the principles, veganism is itself a principle from which certain practices logically follow. If, for example, the vegan principle is applied to diet, it can at once be seen why it must be vegetarian in the strictest sense and why it cannot contain any foods derived from animals. One may become a vegetarian for a variety of reasons, humanitarian, health, or meal preference for such a diet. The principle is a matter of personal feeling and varies accordingly. Veganism, however, is a principle that man has no right to exploit the creatures for his own ends, and no variation occurs. The vegan diet, therefore, is derived entirely from fruits, nuts, vegetables, grains, and other wholesome non-animal products, and excludes flesh, fish, fowl, <laughs> eggs, honey, and... It just throws the word wholesome in there. <laughs> the animal milk and its derivatives. So it seems like the past members of the vegan society already had a principle <laughs> and rights-based approach to veganism and animal rights, but primarily objecting to things like exploitation by man as a sort of rights violation. And you'll see their account of veganism even objected to hunting. So I don't see it as impossible for the vegan society to, you know, see this video or see a future write-up to them concerning the problems with their definition and reverting back to a definition that is a bit more rights-based. All right, guys, that is the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. Please comment, like, engage, share, get this video out there, get conversation started. Sweet. Please know, you know, toxic, insulting each other in the comments instead of, you know, having actual rational arguments and discussion. Please, none of the toxic stuff. Yeah, if good. you support my work and want good to support my Patreon, friend. click the link below <laughs> and get early access to videos as well as other perks. And if you don't know, I do have a book going over all, if not most, of the anti-vegan arguments you're going to hear online and what the debunks are for those. So if you want to get that. Yeah, definitely grab that book. I haven't. I, I'm going to grab it. Freaking, yeah, I won't do it right this second, but after I get off this video or this recording, I will. That will also be linked below. Thank you again for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Dude, fuck off. I don't want anything to do with you. Don't ever speak vegan. You're a fucking piece of shit. Even vegans don't get your weird, stupid, wannabe sense of irony here. Well, who's your audience? Nobody gets these dumb jokes. Dude. This, this guy has the most based outro of any YouTube creator, and I will stand by that position. <laughs> All right, cool. So, yeah, that video was super based. I figured I would agree um, with basically everything he said, which I did. Uh, just a couple minor disagreements. But, yeah. And then this is what Nick had to say recently about the definition of veganism. I don't know what he's about to say, actually, but, um, yeah, we're going to react to it. So, yeah, I think um, my, my primary issue... Um, with the current definition of vegan, uh, or not the current definition, that doesn't make much sense. Um, the most widely held definitions of veganism, or at least the ones that I have most likely, or the ones that I have most often encountered, um, I think they actually entail like really disgusting things, like really gross, disgusting, like reprehensible things. Uh, that I would never allow, right? So I just don't think that those definitions of veganism are tracking my personal values very well. Like, for example, um, let me just find this really quick. Like, uh, there's one definition that gets brought up a lot that just seems to me to be a, a smoldering dumpster fire, right? Like, 
the vegan society's definition is that veganism is a philosophy and way of living which seeks to exclude as far as it's possible. Here we go with the ads. <laughs> it's cool. I don't. I'm not mad, dude. Make your money. I just wish I had premium. <laughs> I'd be making you more money that way. Yeah. If if any of y'all weren't aware, the YouTube creators they get way more money when you are a YouTube premium than if you were to just subscribe and watch their videos with ads. Like ads don't make that much money compared to actual subscriptions. That's why they put the ads there in the first place is because they want you to subscribe well, to because sub school. subscribing makes them more money. <laughs> oh yeah, I gotta play so the So <laughs> having that flexibility at WGU just made my... We can go ahead and mute it. I'm not seeing a skip button yet. <laughs> We might just have to watch it all the way through. Yeah, I think this was just a playthrough ad. Cool beans. Back to the video. Oh, there's two ads. Skip. All right, where were we? Let's see here. Loading, loading. That veganism is a philosophy and way of living which seeks to exclude as far as is possible and practicable, which seems weird because like the things that are possible belong to the domain of things that are practicable. So thank you, thank you. Yes, <laughs> dude. Like this is the thing I always bring up that I feel like. A lot of people, for some reason, miss. I don't know why, but possible and practicable are completely synonymous. They, they, if it's practicable, it's possible, and if it's possible, it's practicable. You're not sharing any new information by using that term. <laughs> mm. Also, I don't know if I mentioned this already. I probably did. Freaking. Nick is a super based content creator. You should definitely watch his content. Um, you should definitely subscribe and uh, check him out. Um, he's super good faith, really smart, uh, great guy. Oh, so this seems like a seems redundant, or the it things that redundant. are practicable practicable belong to the domain of things that are possible it That's is, is it. definitely and redundant <laughs> yeah that just seems like weird to put them both in a conjunction like that yeah it is um, weird it is it makes me feel like they meant to say practical cruelty to animals for food clothing or any other it makes me feel like they meant to say practical, you know, I, I, I feel like they meant to. And that's what most vegans will assume that it means. Like they assume that it means practical, which it doesn't. If you just like us, like we showed, if you just look up the definition, it does not mean practical. It's it's completely different. purpose and by extension promotes the development of uh, and use of animal free alternatives for the benefit of animals humans and the environment in dietary terms it denotes the practice of dispensing with all products derived wholly or partly from animals right so this is this is the vegan society's definition of veganism and i actually think that this entails like really really disturbing things <laughs> hell yeah um so if this definition is used to defend the position that that bivalves are not vegan it actually contains a category error um so all forms of exploitation and cruelty too i don't know what it means to be cruel to a creature that's not sentient right so that seems like a category error yeah um, i agree to, so if this definition is used to defend the notion that oysters are not vegan that's just a category error Right, so like this definition is just not even going to apply. It's going, it's just going to, uh, it's going to include something that is tantamount to gibberish, on my view. So that's one re reason why I don't buy into it. And the, the primary reason I don't buy into it is that it's focused entirely on yeah, animals, and it's like, why, why is animalness the thing that we care about? It isn't. Right? <laughs> 
I don't think animalness is the thing that we care about. I don't even think animalness is the thing that other vegans who defend this definition care about. Like, I honestly don't. Yeah, I agree. Um, and when I ask them to defend the entailments of this definition, they just run from me. Like, they just stop <laughs> talking or they talk about the conversation instead of having the conversation. They don't engage with the critique. They just run. They just tuck tail and just run. <laughs> and it's like, dude, I'm trying to improve the quality of the discourse here by, by offering critiques that, hey. that should help better shape our definition so that they better track the things that we value. I'll give you an example. What is this dude shouting in the background? Do you guys hear that? Example. <laughs> so from this definition, the, the following, the following hey. inference is Survival entailed, expert Adam or is it a club. It's uh, crazy. Oh. If it is not to be good. And winter insulated emergency sleeping bag can keep you warm even inside of a freezing cold ice bath. Check it out. <gasps> Alright, that was an ad. <laughs> My bad, well, guys. I just fixed it. <laughs> you can use these to save your life. I think I fixed it. <laughs> Come so on, Call Holocaust, the sentient creatures. Then the sentient creatures. All right, let me just rewind this just a tad. <laughs> so from this definition, the the following the following inference can be entailed or is entailed. Uh, P one, if it is not vegan to holocaust the sentient creatures, then the sentient creatures are animals, right? So basically saying that animals are the thing that veganism are concerned with, like that veganism is concerned with. P2, the sentient creatures are not animals. So we're, we're, we're submitting the, the existence of a sentient creature that is not an animal. See, this guy's presenting an actual argument. Like this guy's super based. You've got to follow him. Therefore, it is vegan to holocaust the sentient creatures like there's a deductively valid internal critique of the of the vegan society's definition and it entails hilarious shit so basically it's saying that if aliens came down from on high we could enslave them and slit their throats fucking hang them upside down and kill them and eat them there we go that's ridiculous. There's another reductio, right? Like, if if aliens came down and they didn't belong to the uh, domain of animalia, then, yeah, then it would be completely justifiable to just complete torture them and murder them, put them into concentration camps. Like, <laughs> it's just, like, it's ridiculous. That That's an excellent reductio. You see, this is... This is why you guys got to right? follow. So that's why I, I reject the, the vegan society's definition. I think it's reprehensible. I think I think it entails hilarious, stupid bullshit that doesn't track my values. Super based. I would rather use a definition of veganism that better track my values. Such a definition of veganism could be like, it's just an applied ethic that is concerned with extending rights to animals um, when appropriate to do so. Hell I yeah. think that's perfectly coherent. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we got a request to speak. Um, I don't know if this is going to be about the, the definition that, or not. Oh, shit. They went back to being a listener? Uh, okay, yay. What's that, man? Uh, so I think one thing uh, to keep in mind is I don't think when a vegan says that this is the definition of veganism that they are meaning this is the full extent of their moral view. And I, I yeah. no, yeah, 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 yeah. That's I, I think like that, and that might be a bit of an equivocation. So like, the um the internal critique that I ran was not a moral argument. It's not making normative claims. All it's saying is that it's what they're not. It's vegan. So on the vegan side of the definition, like you like, it could be it could be vegan to Holocaust aliens, but not ethical to Holocaust aliens. Those are two different things. Okay, he just said it, it could be vegan to Holocaust aliens, but not ethical to Holocaust aliens on that definition, which I agree. Um, he seems to be having some audio issues. Hopefully that clears up soon. Right, so I think they would still say it's still wrong for other reasons, just not because... I agree. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would agree. Um, that's, that's, partly, uh, that's partly the reason 
why I disagree with the um, why I disagree with the definition because it it, it does seem like it, it, it it's not explicit but it does imply that there's some normative valuation going on with regards to animals right like animals are this thing that have moral value I just don't think that they are plausibly the only thing that has moral value I don't think our I don't think our moral valuations are tracking the animalness as well. So, like, I I agree with you. I don't think the vegans would actually sign off on holocausting like aliens. But that's actually kind of my point. Like, if they're no more okay with holocausting aliens than they are with holocausting cows, um, then I think we should just restructure the definition of veganism to include both scenarios and not just exclude one scenario over the other scenario. I agree. Yeah, what I what I find kind of baffling is. When I, if like I were to suggest that sponges are tasty, which yeah, I know they're not, but let's just say, you know, we have the taste buds that found sponges tasty. They have no even free ganglia. Yeah. Under the vegan definition, it would still not be vegan to eat them because they're under the umbrella of animal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So like one of one of the entailments here is just like. Okay, if if the vegan de- if the definition of veganism, if all it's concerned with is whether or not something is an animal, well, then it's perfectly vegan to eat a sentient plant, for example, like a plant <laughs> that just you know. This was stuff. this was the exact same uh, argument that, um, or the exact same critique that uh, Lifting Vegan Logic brought up. You know, what if we had a plant that was sentient? It would be vegan to torture and kill that plant because it's not an animal. <laughs> on that definition which again is why it's silly um through some fluke of evolution just developed sentience and it was no different than the richness of experience that a cow has it would be vegan to eat that plant cow right (laughs) like if it that that seems absurd to me i know it's a hypothetical and this this creature doesn't actually exist so far as we know but i don't think that's relevant like if it It did exist i wouldn't be okay with that so I think like my values are not actually tracking like animalness, they're tracking some other thing. And I think it's just the, the presence or absence of a conscious experience. Yeah, yeah. Am I the only one that likes the sound of typing? I love the sound of typing. It's just so comforting. Like something about it's like very nice. So now this person saying that I had a disagreement with them years ago, um, before I started my podcast, that was like back in 2020. So they're talking about like 2018, 2019 when I was really active. Like, dude, I might not even have the same views now. What the heck? (laughs) True. Yeah, no, like, uh, my views change like faster than now. Like, you know, I even keep track of like, sometimes I'll look back and I'll be like, did I say that that recently? Like, holy cow. I can't believe I was, like, at that position. I can't give any specific examples at the moment off the top of my head. But, I mean, I do catch myself, like, looking at some stuff I've said and just being like, holy cow. I'm glad I'm not on that position anymore. <laughs> like, it's like, I keep, like it, it baffles me sometimes how recently I've said silly stuff. Like, but, you know, it just goes to show how fast you progress. Uh, yeah, so I think I've, uh, did you, did you want to keep speaking for us or, uh, did you want to just go back to the audience? Uh, it's cool. It's oh, cool. yeah, sorry. I'll just go back to the audience. Oh yeah. Cool. 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 It's all good. So the animal rightist, uh, is somebody who's pressed me or somebody who's challenged me on this, uh, this particular view that I have before, and you know, I, 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 I invite you to talk about it. Like you, you, you've heard me have like perfectly amicable conversations so far. Um, if you're unable to talk, that's fine. But if you are able to talk, I, I would, uh, I would encourage you to talk because it's not like I fight. It's not like I'm rude or anything like that. I think we could have a perfectly normal, healthy conversation about it, um, provided that you're able to have the conversation. Like you're not like at work or something.
Looks like we got another ad. I'll go ahead and mute it so that we don't have to listen. Oh, look at that. I've got the skip right away. Ah, oh, beautiful. But yeah, how long uh, how long has the how long has the space been going on? Almost, almost an hour, like forty five minutes. So, um, I think that's sufficient. I'll give it about I'll give it a few more minutes um, for somebody I invited to, to show up and try to defend their position that I'm wrong. Um, that I would be interested in. Let's see what let's see if these people show up. That'd be cool. I, I don't know what the, the video. Hell. So. I don't I, I, like I don't know what the hell I'm thinking starting these Twitter spaces actually thinking <laughs> that people who aren't just friends of mine who um, <laughs> who are playing devil's advocate which should go up but uh, oh <laughs> shit we have a request so maybe I'm about to be proven wrong sweet alright let's get it let's go yeah it's, what's up man Yeah, yeah, your mic is muted, but uh, I gave you speaking terms, so. Hey, hi, good afternoon. Hi, hey, what's up? Good, thank you. Um, <laughs> I think it's what? very interesting all the things that everyone has been saying here about ulcers. And I think mm -hmm. it's pointless because uh, someone was saying if they will follow the definition of veganism as not causing harm to sentient beings, mm -hmm. then Mm -hmm. you're right oysters if you're right right because i don't know but yeah, then, yeah. at the end i just wanted to share my opinion um mm -hmm. like for me if it's an animal i won't eat it that's what i always mm -hmm. say right but then more yeah. than if it's an animal if it has feelings or whatever yeah if it's if, i think if about the but, question is sentient but, but for the, example, the, the, it's a property that arises sorry, from sentience okay go on yeah yeah no, 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 <laughs> it's sorry. like i wouldn't i, mean I wouldn't eat oysters because at the end what i want to do more than just avoiding a physical harm is to mm -hmm. ecosystems also so as the same way i wouldn't eat oysters i wouldn't bring a piece of a coral reef to my bathroom just to decorate right so mm -hmm. yeah so in, in my, my position here is whether or not it would be ethical ads again looks like this one's only six seconds I mean, once it loads. Mm. Can I get a skip? Can I get a skip? Oh, good. We're just going to go hop right back into it. No skip needed. Oh, second ad. Hit me with the second ad. All right, guys, sorry uh, for the little interruption here. Uh, OBS seems to have crashed uh, while I was in the middle of making this video. So I'm just gonna redo this little part that I just did. And uh, yeah, hopefully we won't run into any more issues like that. So this is right where we were. if it wants to play for me. Okay, maybe it didn't hear me. Let me try again. There we go. Yeah, so in, in my, my position here is whether or not it would be ethical to uh -huh. consume uh, oysters, like in principle, in right? So, like, so yeah, yeah, like assuming that lost that, their minds and fighting among vegans is just so stupid. 
because at the end, if what it bothers you is to hurt an animal, you're not hurting an animal. But yeah, I agree. And you know, I don't think that like for me personally, I don't have a problem with people eating bivalves. I mean, they're probably not sentient. I mean, like, look, I don't really know. I will admit that I'm agnostic on the issue just by virtue of a lack of understanding of, you know, the more complex nuances between biological uh, mechanisms and how they relate to the properties of sentience and whatnot. But, um, you know, the it, it seems likely if, based on what I've seen so far, and I do want to look more deeply into it to be able to have a more robust position, but... Um, it doesn't seem like they're sentient and so like it's not something i would be concerned with like to me it's very trivial whether or not someone eats bivalves uh you know i'm much more concerned with uh creatures that we are certain of their sentience you know for example like uh cows and chickens where it's very obvious uh the amount of suffering and harm that is being entailed while they're being tortured and holocausted and so, yeah, that's obviously, like, that's something I'm going to care about dramatically more. If you want to leave them all alone, just leave them all alone. At the end, I think well, it's more important to go and talk with an animal abuser while chewing a someone's leg from a baby or something like that than with a vegan who is just eating a mollusk yeah exactly yeah well yeah i would take the i would, I would take the view that there are certainly bigger fish to fry it's just mm -hmm. that this seemed to be pertinent for my <laughs> or just to have a little fun here you know instead of bigger fish to fry since you know frying fish is just ethically horrendous right like uh we could, uh, I mean, in the majority of, uh, vast majority of cases, you know, we could instead say we got bigger potatoes to fry, right? <laughs> I'm just messing around, but, you know, it's fun. Twitter interactions right now. Um, yeah, so I would just, like, like I said before, I just take the view that I, I don't think they're sentient because I don't think analogous structures are, are sentient like the, like the ganglia in my spinal cord, for example. So I, I don't extend the precautionary principle to them on that basis. Um, I do think that it is kind of like uh, trivial. I, I actually do think, I agree with you there. I, th I think it's a very trivial uh, kind of consideration. Yeah, it's the same it's word just I very, used. It's very weird uh, for people to come up to me and say, and like, yeah, you're, you're not you're, vegan you're... because you're doing this and that. I just remember with all these I just remember but when everyone was saying like if you receive a vaccine you're not vegan because those things are tested in animals and things like that it's like yeah there's a lot of uh, nut jobs out there in the vegan community and uh, <laughs> when it comes to anti-vax positions vegans unfortunately tend to be uh, one of the more well known for uh, having ridiculous positions on that but um, regarding um, <clears throat> regarding uh, the position of vaccines and whether or not they're vegan, I highly recommend you guys check out Avi's video. Uh, well, it's not actually Avi's video, but the video where Avi, Dr. Avi Bitterman presents the case for uh, why vaccines are congruent with veganism. And he does this in a video that I believe is by Plant-Based News. Uh, I'll, I'll put a link down in the, the description. Um, but you guys should definitely check that out. He makes some excellent arguments. Um, for example, like one of the arguments he makes is that uh, if you're concerned about increasing the demand for animal testing, well, it's actually a like not going to be uh, a concern with using the vaccine because the animals have already been tested on, and using the vaccine is actually going to make it less likely that. Well, okay, getting into that later. But like the animals have already been tested on, and so by by utilizing the vaccine, there's not going to be an increase in demand for animal testing. Like they're not going to be like, oh, we need to go test these animals again because people took the vaccine. Like that doesn't make any sense, right? And so, but on top of that, there's actually credence in the other direction, and that and that is that you know when there's a certain swaths of the population that are unvaccinated, 
uh, vaccine companies are liable to look at these populations and go, okay, well, they're not obviously not happy with the vaccines that are available. Let's create a new vaccine to try and fill this gap and uh, create a better vaccine that is going to that is going to appeal to this portion of the population that still has become unvaccinated. And so because of that, by not taking the vaccine, we actually have more reason to believe that you might increase the demand for animal testing, whereas we don't have a reason to believe that in the case of taking the vaccine. So ironically, while mo a lo most vegans, not most vegans, I won't say that, but like a lot of vegans will take a staunchly anti-vax position uh, claiming that it's like an that it's uh, completely non-vegan, uh, it's it they s I've yet to see a defeater for Avi's argument where he's positing that <clears throat> where he's positing that uh, that there's actually a higher likelihood of uh, not only a higher likelihood but like any likelihood at all as opposed to the alternative that animal testing demand will increase by virtue of not taking the vaccine as opposed to taking it. And also, he, he further makes the case, uh, which whether you're a utilitarian or a deontologist, you're still going to have to grapple with his position because he clearly explains how taking the vaccine would be entailed on both of those positions. So it's uh, definitely worth checking out. I highly recommend it. Anyways, back to the video. Why? Why? Yeah, Why yeah, are you no, calling they... yourself vegan if you're not helping others out and just pointing out the ones that are already doing something? Yeah, so what like um, with, with with regards to like fa like uh, products or whatever that require some amount of animal testing, for example, like when we're like vegan, veganism is an applied ethic, but it has to be um, informed to some degree by some normative ethic, right? So if you're if you're concerned with utility and something is vegan if it provides a certain amount of utility, um, I think e even if vaccines were like tested on animals, it's probably the case that they provide a sufficiently high amount of utility that we should just consider the vaccines vegan. Mm, sufficiently high amount of utility that we would consider the vaccines vegan. It sounds like that's a, actually a threshold deontic position. Um, because it sounds like it, it, he didn't specifically mention a threshold, but it sounds like he's implying that there is a threshold wherein the testing becomes ethical by virtue of the utility increase. Exactly. I think people just, I don't know, they don't think through when they start fighting over trivial things. I think people don't think through a lot of things and that's actually one thing I am hoping to help mitigate with my channel so if you're interested in this type of content reacting to vegan videos uh, getting people to think about things more critically um, yeah please consider subscribing I would really super appreciate it and they do more harm than helping I think. No, I would, I, I, would, I would agree with that I, I think um, I think veganism would be better served if we could agree upon a definition that just better tracks the things that we care about. And I don't think the current definitions that are on offer, uh, especially yeah, the one from the vegan society, actually, yeah. that, I don't think they track our I don't think it tracks our values very well. Yeah, I I agree with that too. I don't like it, but it's what we have. But instead of looking for a definition, we're just everyone is just fighting over trivial. Things. Yeah, like we, we have to have some shared, you know, understanding, some shared appreciation of the terms that are on the table. And like, I just don't think that the current definitions of veganism are, are very good. Like, so I'm trying to put a, bit, I'm trying to put a new definition on the table because I think it's more stable. I think it's more easily defended. And I think it better tracks what we care about. Same and here, Nick. Same here. I'm not and a linguistic same, prescriptivist, so. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We have to look for linguistic vegans out there but actually I wanted to thank you because I never thought about oysters like that as I said in my perspective if that's an animal I would touch it I would do anything to it I just I don't need it 
and it's fine for me, but I never thought about it. And it made me think about why exactly I won't. And then I realized why I won't eat oysters, for example. So I appreciated this, that you did this because I could listen to everyone and everyone's opinions. And I know that people that will say a lot of things and we shouldn't care actually if someone else tells you you're not being because you're doing this and that and that's wrong who are you to say who i am or what i am or rather what is your argument so, it, it doesn't <laughs> I, really matter I, yeah I, at this point i self-identify as vegan and i think i can i can defend my position on that matter pretty well so i don't really care if people want to say that i'm not vegan all i want to know is like what's what's the argument right and usually it just cashes out into Oh, the vegan society it's definition very, just disagrees with you, and it's like, well, that's not persuasive. Yeah, and it's very important because then that people goes after animal eaters, and they don't know how to defend their positions, and they just start calling names and do all the things that they have done, and retweeting with mean things, and it's the same behavior that is not going anywhere. It's not mm. doing anything. No, I, I think yeah, I think you and I are in are in agreement about this, and um, yeah, I thank you for your kind words, and you're you're welcome. Um, uh, I think uh, Travis wanted to say something. Yeah, can you hear me? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I actually had a question about. Uh... All right, Travis. We'll hear your question after this ad. <clears throat> And I guess skip, 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 please. <sighs> I don't see one yet. Oh, come on, dude. I don't want to wait through this whole one minute and 23 seconds. There it is. Thank you. definition of vegan so mm -hmm. like let's say we have someone who who doesn't eat animal products or like doesn't consume any animal animal products at all like they don't buy leather they don't buy fur they don't eat any animal products but they're okay with exploiting sentient ai for example would you consider that person a vegan or not i mean that would just depend for me on whether or not the exploitation in question actually entails a rights violation. So, I mean, there's definitely plenty of examples we can think of of exploitation that don't entail rights violations. So, yeah, I mean, like, as long as it was clear that there was a rights violation, then, uh, yeah, I would say that would be true on my view. Uh exploiting sentient AI? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a good question. Um, <clears throat> you know, yeah, I think um, I'm not entirely sure, actually. I think, um, so I, I've been pressed on things like this before, and I previously kind of bifurcated sentience into two categories where it's like um, sentience that I would uh, give moral value to, and then there's like another type of sentience that's like trivial sentience, where it's not clear that it's actually like an emotive sentience, that there's actually like emotional computations going on. It's not sure that there are actually even preferences going on. Um, in those cases, I, I I might even consider it trivial sentience, and I, I might be okay with exploitation. 
Um, I would have to, but, but this is not a very strong position. I would just have to give it more thought. So, well, let's say like the AI is, it's like not trivial sentience. Let's say like the AI, it's sentient to the same degree that say like an average human is. Oh yeah, then I, I think exploitation of it would be unethical, yeah. But do you think that like someone who like avoids animal products to like support the exploitation of sentient AI, do you think that would like exclude them from being a vegan? Uh, on my definition, yeah, but they might they might have some other definition that wouldn't exclude them from being a vegan. Okay, yeah, because the question I have about this, or like, because I'm wondering, because you have like a lot of vegans or like people who like avoid animal products, but they might have like certain like political views that we might like regard as like condoning the exploitation of humans who are like also sentient beings. Mm -hmm. and, like, and there's like a lot of people on like Twitter who will say like, if you take this certain position, like you're not vegan. So like, I was wondering how we would mm. like think of instances like that. Right, 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 right. So I think uh, like there is some semantics to clear up. Um, so when you say like exploitation, like I don't take all forms of exploitation to be unethical. I think there's some forms of exploitation that don't entail rights violations. So like my, my primary view is whether or not a right has been violated. Um, in the case of like some AI with like trivial sentience, it's not clear that rights are being violated by e exploiting it or using it or whatever. Um, in the case of like, uh, you know, they have some political opinion where some people are going to be exploited. It's not clear to me that all cases of that stuff happening are going to entail rights violations necessarily because I don't, I don't, I don't take all forms of exploitation to be rights violations. Right, so on my view, I. like there are some, there there is, is is some construal of that that would that would um, that would make me think that it's unethical, and then there are other construals that make me think that it, that it, that it uh, is ethical. Right. I uh, We got another ad here. We got my lovely skip button. entail something unethical and somebody supports rights violations and I think it's unethical I think that would just be trivially true under my view yeah sure but I'm talking about like okay let me just give this example so like let's say you have like a tanky like person who like is fine with like China's treatment of like Uyghur Muslims mm -hmm. uh, but at the same time they like avoid animal products they think it's wrong to like like kill animals for food to like test on them, like to wear clothing. Like if they like avoided animal products, but say they supported like China's like treatment of like Uyghur Muslims, or say they supported like the Russian invasion of like Ukraine, like would you say that person's not a vegan, like because they support like rights violations against humans? Uh, yeah. On my definition, on my definition, I wouldn't say that they're vegan. Yeah, same okay, with mine. I was, yeah. I was wondering about that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, um, I also saw, so I had one vegan, like, when we were talking about this, 
like actually it seemed to me like they were saying that sponges are sentient corals <laughs> <laughs> are sentient I would love to hear the argument for that <laughs> for real, like very strange I mean it was that um, who disagrees that sponges uh, are sent- that Spencer sentient guy who told me that Spencer, Spencer, Spencer. Like unpop- no, no, was, no. It was unpop science, or like something like that. Uh oh, unpop. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy's a motivated reasoner. Yeah, I've seen, I've seen him talk about this subject in the past, and he seems like somebody who, um, like I, I, I read a thread of theirs talking about like bivalve sentience, where like the entire thread was just them, um, basically just like begging the question. They were making they were they were they were just stating a whole bunch of propositions. Uh, one after the other, and you'd only grant them if you first granted that five albums are sentient, and it's just like, you're, like this entire thread is just begging the question, like, like wh- why is any of this persuasive? Why do you think any of this would be persuasive? It, like, just doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, yeah, I'm aware of this individual, and they're like a pretty um, significantly motivated individual. Yeah, and I also saw that they claimed there is a consensus, a scientific consensus that bival, uh, by like oysters are sentient. That sounds like nonsense. Uh, which I see no, I I've have never seen any evidence, evidence for that. <laughs> no. Uh, no, I haven't. Yeah, I haven't yeah, either. Definitely would need to see that evidence. So, <laughs> I don't know what's going on with him. Yeah, um... Yeah, some people make like really weird claims, like trees are sentient, and then just like when you ask them for the argument, they talk about like environment sensing things, like oh, trees, like they, you know, they spread chemicals to one another that like signal to one another to like behave a certain way when like there's some external stimulus, and it's just like, well, that's yeah, sure, but I mean, like my laptop also responds to external stimulus when I, you know. Uh, apply to it what this is is a conflation of intelligence and sentience right sentience and intelligence are two different things my laptop responds to stimuli because it's intelligent not because it's sentient and the same is true for plants and fungi right like they respond to stimuli because they're intelligent but not because they're sentient just like something that you could program a computer to do like like this it's not this isn't like evidence for sentience this is like really weird yeah that's exactly what i was saying yeah i mean yeah. It, it seems like a lot of these people of the vegans are kind of like doing the same thing that carnists do like they're citing the fact that you know these like that they will react to like certain stimuli as evidence of sentience, like no. in a mm-hmm. similar way that like people do it with like plants. Yeah, no, I agree. The thing I find strange is like a lot of these vegans that I've seen that's from this discourse, like a lot of them seem to take the view that and I that, you know, even if they were like sentient, that it would it would still be wrong to eat them like a lot of them like take things and even if we like somehow prove like 100 percent certainty that that oysters are not sentient and we knew for sure like a lot of them like even if you present them with that hypothetical like they still like have an objection to eat them <laughs> which i just find like very very strange yeah that's just yeah silly. Like, with that hypothetical, we've, like, taken any, you know, doubt out of the question, and they still object regardless. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds totally silly to me. Like, why on earth would we care about (laughs) causing harm to a non-sentient individual? I mean, there's, I mean, I can think of very nuanced cases, like defiling, uh, you know, the uh, body of somebody who was on life support but brain dead. Or, you know, maybe defiling a corpse, I guess. But then but then we're not talking about somebody, but we're literally talking about some body, which is not the same. It's not a person, right? <laughs> mm-hmm. 
No, that's how you can tell that they're ideologically motivated instead of motivated by reason. Yeah. And if they're if they're ideologically motivated, then I there's like a barrier to communication there. Like I don't know what I don't know how to communicate with somebody who doesn't care about consistency or reason or logic or any of those things. Yeah, it kind of reminds me in a way of like the vegans who will say that we should still care about animals, like even if they're not. Got the ad. There's my skip. I don't care about animals, like even if they're non sentient just because they're animals, it kind of reminds me in a way of like hardcore pro-lifers. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I think yeah. that we should care about like non-sentient fetuses, like just because they're human. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, just, well, that does sound silly to me, right? Like, I, I wouldn't care about uh, a, no, uh, a non-sentient fetus just because they're human. However, I do care about non-sentient fetuses and the reason that I care about non sentient fetuses is because what I what I seem to value is the probability of reaching sentience, right? So the fact that the probability of a zygote to reach sentience compared to any of the prerequisites that came before it is dramatically higher, um, assuming that the uh, biological processes that sustain that don't get interrupted. And so that just happens to be something I value is having a high probability of reaching sentience. That's the same reason why I'm not going to value somebody who's on life support and who's brain dead is because their probability of reaching sentience is exceptionally low. And so that's doesn't give me, uh, it's just not what I, I don't value that. Uh, or I mean, excuse me, I don't, I, I do value the probability of reaching sentience. And so, um, when the probability is low, that that's uh, that's reason for me to not value the uh, harm caused to that individual in question, uh, su such as taking them off life support and killing them. Uh, in the same way, like if someone told me like we had these seeds, right, like these plant seeds or whatever, that we knew were like going to become sentient as long as we didn't interrupt their biological processes, uh, such that they were no longer able to do that. Well, even though they weren't yet sentient, I would still consider it uh, morally wrong to kill those seeds, right? And to destroy those seeds. And maybe there's a lot of people that would, I, I don't know, maybe there's a lot, maybe there isn't. But I think some people might consider that to be silly. Maybe not, I don't know. But that just is what I value. And that's the reason that I value a non-sentient fetus. So, uh, yeah. But I do agree that like the humanness in question isn't what's it's valuable, like which is uh, precisely why taking someone off of life support would not be an example of uh, a moral harm that I would consider uh, obligatory to avoid. Yeah, and, and it, it's not the it, and if you press them on it, it's not the humanness that their values are actually tracking at the end of the day. In most in most cases, even if you tease that out of them, though, they'll still be committed to this. Oh well, I won't do this because it's a human. I won't do this because it's an animal. I don't think it's ethical to do this because it's either a human or animal. Like even if you tease out of them that they have other values or they they have other values that sub, that kind of like either supersede or subsume those values like they, they still take the position it's like what the hell are you talking about it, it just it, it always seems really weird to me to end up in a situation like that where like they're just it's very clear that there's zealotry going on yeah i it's unfortunately like pretty common among 
like online vegan spaces I've seen, at least on Twitter. Like, I don't know if you've ever, like, come across, there's like a certain group of vegans on Twitter that I've unfortunately dealt with before. <laughs> That, like, they call themselves, like, intersectional vegans. Oh. And so, for example, these are people that, like, like, if you call, like, uh, animal agriculture, if you, like, use the word holocaust or slavery or something mm-hmm. like that, there's, like, a certain, like, section of vegans on Twitter that, like, freak out. Yeah, like, well, I mean, like, that's just tone policing, right? <laughs> I don't understand why. Like, they'll call you, like, racist like anti-Semitic. Yeah, which, you know, is not very special uh, in, t- in terms of online spaces. I mean, how often do people get called racists online? Like, it happens all the time. And you know what? It was actually Ask Yourself that um, recently made a Twitter post about this. Um, it was, I think it was maybe like a month or two ago. But basically, he was saying that, like, we got to come up with a word that describes the way that words get overused online so much that they lose their, their puissance, their potency, and they lose, like, the, the original meaning that they had, and they become so vague and so loose that they just become more or less useless terms. And, like, this has been happening to a bunch of different terms online. Uh, a couple that come to mind readily would be... Uh, racism uh you know race calling people racist calling people anti-semitic or uh calling people groomers using the word grooming right like these have been like so overused online that they're starting to like they're losing the 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 usefulness of the original meaning uh in with respect to how loosely they're being used and it's it's really a pity but like yeah we i I wish we would come up with a term to describe that because it's definitely uh, something that occurs, and uh, it's it's a it's a problem. Um, play. Yeah, I would just consider that a form of dodging. Oh, I agree, but the problem is like none of these people or at least the ones I've seen like actually want to engage with the argument like you can like give them an argument and they'll just like dismiss it on the basis of well like you're white or like you're non-Jewish like you have to like listen to what black people say or like listen to what Jewish people say which I find like a very strange way of looking at things well two things about that I mean first off like it's you're gonna find people on both sides of the fence when it comes to like if you're looking into those demographics to see like what their opinions are as a as a, a, a in terms of like what you should what would you should use in uh, with your language in describing these things and so it's it's not even clear like um what the critique is you know when someone's raising that right and what was the second point? Let me just rewind this for a second here. Jog my memory. To, like, listen to what black people say or, like, listen to what Jewish people say. Miss it on the basis of, well, like, you're white or, like, you're non-Jewish. Like, you have to, like, listen to what black people say or, like, listen to what... Yeah, I, you know, I originally was thinking this sounds almost like an ad hominem fallacy. Like, they're trying to tell you that, like, by virtue of this character trait, why proposition X is untrue. Now, I, m- people very commonly misuse the ad hominem fallacy as I understand it. A lot of people just consider insults at all to be a, an ad hominem, which I don't take the, that view. What I understand ad hominem to be is that when you're saying that proposition X is either true or false by virtue of character uh, trait Y or Z, right? And so, uh, yeah, that, that almost sounds like a genuine ad hominem fallacy to me. Like, mm. if they're trying to use those terms as pejoratives, then surely it would be.
Jewish people say, which I find like a very strange way of looking at things, like for multiple yeah. reasons. Because like, like first of all, not all black people and Jewish people are going to agree right. on like whether it's appropriate to use that language. Mm -hmm. And also, like, how do you even choose like which one to listen to? And also, and then separately, like, why would we think that, you know, the truth value of something is, like, dependent on the identity of the person, you know, making the argument? It just seems well, yeah, it, that's just, a, they, uh, there's actually, there's a name for that that's called a genetic fallacy. When, when you are, when you submit that the truth value of a proposition depends on the, the person who uttered the proposition, that, yeah, that's called a genetic, that's called a genetic fallacy. Oh. Okay. Genetic fallacy. Thank you, Nick. I've never heard of that before, so I really appreciate that. You learned something new today. So there, you know, you could tell it was a fallacy. I could, I could tell it was a fallacy. I mean, like, yeah, so genetic fallacy, that's what it is. Um, yeah, so um, a friend of mine actually just sent me a publication that's really interesting. So apparently... There has been a case of a well-formed cerebellum and brainstem-like structure that grew out of an ovarian teratoma in a 16-year-old girl. So somebody has actually literally, like, done something pretty close to growing a brain on their ovary. Um, <laughs> what? What the? That is trippy. I've never heard of anything like that. Now, somebody who wants to take the position against, you know, bivalve death in general, not even consumption, but just bivalve death, like, let's just say that this, uh, that this tumor was benign and posed no threats to the person that they were in. Somebody who takes the pro-bivalve position, I don't see why they wouldn't take the pro-tumor position, And right? Like, I wouldn't take the pro-tumor position. I think if you want that thing removed, you should just remove it. Um, Similarly, I, I don't think we should extend a, any sort of precautionary principle to uh, to bivalves if we're not going to extend the precautionary principle to this tumor. And even if you say like, oh well, you got to remove it because like it's got to like it's going to cause some problem. It's like okay, well, what if we removed it and put it on life support? Would you be in, would be would you be in favor of that? Um, yeah. And apparently, most of these tumors are in fact benign. So. Like, if we remove this tumor, would you be in favor of that, uh, putting it on life support and keeping it alive to, presume, to preserve its, its possible sentience? I just don't know. Um, I don't know enough about the probability of that being, being sentient. You know, if the probability was really high, uh, then, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I could see a good reason to extend moral consideration to that potential entity, but... It's very unclear to me, like what the probability of that entity reaching sentience is. So I'm, I'm really unsure. Like, uh, I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't know if it would be morally wrong to cause harm to that, to that. Uh, that I think that sounds entity. crazy. I think that sounds ludicrous. So I just, I, likewise, I wouldn't extend the precautionary principle to a bivalve because this structure that I'm not giving any moral weight to is literally more complicated and, and probably has a higher. Uh, likelihood of sentience than the bivalve itself and i'm okay just throwing it in the garbage um so like yeah, on, not sure on my view okay like that. Mm -hmm. I, I just don't see why bivalves should be given moral value yeah i mean i guess like a lot of vegans just have this weird emotional attachment to the idea of animals i have noticed that as well I'm going to put this publication. I have an entire obsidian file about how to defend, like, <laughs> bivalves and oysters and stuff, so I'm going to put this publication in there. Let's do <laughs> Of course you do, Nick. See, that's why this guy's based. you got to follow him. <laughs> <coughs> Super interesting. Um, yeah, so I think, we, I think we went over time because I have another appointment that I need to get to. Um, but 
yeah i mean if if we didn't get a good debate today like at least we got like a lot of really good conversations going and i think like for anybody in uh the audience who was kind of on the fence about it maybe what i said shifted you and maybe like some of the more devil's advocate positions shifted you in the opposite direction um you know whatever uh but i hope that the people in the audience actually found value in the conversations that were had in this space but uh yeah i think i'm going to uh i think i'm going to bring it to a close because i have another appointment that i need to get to so thanks for coming out everybody and um i'll catch you in the next one yeah, thank you, Nick. I definitely found value in this, and I uh, really appreciate you coming out with the super base content, as always. Uh, yeah, excellent content from Nick. Um, please subscribe to The Nutrivore on YouTube. Um, follow The Nutrivore on Twitter. Uh, his content is very, very um, uh, intelligent. He's a smart guy. He's a great guy. Very good faith. Um, highly recommend following him. Uh, and his links will be in the description to his stuff. So, uh, yeah, hit him up. And other than that, <clears throat> I think I'm going to call it good. Uh, assuming that the video uh, actually works this time in saving. It seems like every time I save the file, it somehow cuts off the end of it and I have to re-record. So hopefully this last five minutes will stay recorded. And, uh, yeah, I hope you all have a great rest of your night or day or whatever it is. And, uh... Yeah. Um, if you like this kind of content, uh, like reacting to vegan content, uh, trying to get people to think more critically, um, then please consider subscribing. I would really appreciate it. Um, and if you have any vegan content that you'd like me to react to, um, please send it my way. Just hit me up on Discord, shoot me a message, or you can pop in my server. There'll be a link to that as well below. And uh, yeah, uh, and I'll be sure to react to it, uh, post it up on YouTube. And uh, other than that, uh, thank you so much for watching, and uh, peace out, y'all. Catch you in the next one. Than ever and bless our pray. Anti fragile spirit molded like clay. Every day making my way. Say what they made, they go stick at that bank. Hey, <laughs> yeah, way above the hate. Wait for this superlatively nine. I'm Pharrell B. Big shout out.